never before has the two-way flow of information between the public and elected officials been easier and paradoxically more complex than it is now. Changes in technology and media consumption are transforming the way people communicate about politics. Are they also changing the way politicians communicate to the public? In the era of social media and personalized politics, political parties, politicians, interest groups, the media, and citizens are using new tactics, tools, and channels to disseminate information. Canada has reached a point where political communication, from political marketing to citizen journalism, is of vital importance to the workings of government, and the ways in which key political actors in Canada are conveying their messages are changing. How exactly is the social network impacting Canadian politics, and what does this mean for the future of Canadian democracy? An interesting online column at cbc.ca by former Conservative Cabinet Minister Stockwell Day targets Twitter and the impact it has on politics and journalism. First, the universe that is exploding is often only a tiny, albeit activist, sliver of the overall population. Second, many times the apparently... Stockwell is absolutely right about the sliver of the population. Twitter is changing the way we do things in some ways. Twitter changes a lot of people's minds. It puts pressure on conventional, mainstream journalists in what some people call a rush to air or rush to print. So journalists move more quickly to move their stories before those on Twitter have a chance to air their stories first. Not only is Twitter itself unrepresentative, I think the way people use Twitter accentuates its unrepresentativeness. Most people tend to follow like-minded people on Twitter, and so they reinforce like specialized news sources, whether it's Sun News or Fox News or MSNBC, reinforces your own opinion and limits the number of sources you're getting information from, and it can also ultimately be quite misleading. For the first couple of weeks of the Essentially, the group of people who are on Twitter are influencers. They are politically engaged people, politicians, or they might be journalists, but it would be a mistake to think that Twitter represents the general population of Canada and their opinions. They are just a sliver of the population. That being said, I think Twitter, and all social media for that matter, is really useful, and the politicians who understand the social media channels well, as well as the new campaign environment, can use it to their advantage. Take Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson, for instance. Jim Watson uses social media tools and applications to reach citizens and engage in conversations. Watson takes a personal interest in his social media presence and activity, commenting that politicians have a right to speak out. Watson noted that he updates his own Twitter feed, trending now at just over 20,000 followers, and will occasionally actively engage with people who reach out to him. Watson says he likes Twitter for its spontaneity, its reach, and its brevity, noting that both Twitter and Facebook bring him closer to the people. In angling for the leadership of the federal Liberal Party, Justin Trudeau's social media strategy seems to be engage and mobilize voters on every online platform to show the public a relatable candidate who deserves their vote. Like Obama, Trudeau focuses not only on gathering mass followings across multiple social networks, but also on being authentic. Trudeau is one of the first members of Parliament to craft his own messages on Twitter rather than sending out a feed of press releases or canned content. The internet and social media platforms, most significantly Twitter and Facebook, have brought with them an apparent opportunity to transform the way citizens and politicians communicate with one another. However, while politicians' tweets may be informative, they are certainly not engaging. There is general agreement that a new political communication age has recently developed. Politicians need to reassess the benefits of social networking and the internet for improving their relationships with citizens as part of their overall commitment to new forms of civic engagement.